hello welcome to our second lesson on fluid dynamics okay so in our previous lesson we discussed about vector field visualization and in this video we'll go through what a fluid is the fluid flow phenomenon and some key properties you should know before we start a para visual flow okay so if you've not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe for more videos all right let's start so when you say a fluid what is a fluid all right so a fluid is any substance that deforms continuously all right so you should underline the deform and this aspect as well it deforms continuously when subjected to shear stress okay this aspect is also important no matter how small it is no matter how small the shear stress is okay so example is water okay uh, kerosene ketchup honey okay it's easy air is also parts okay now someone will ask if sugar is not a fluid because um when you tilt a cup of sugar you know it flows down and then you pour down on a table the question is does it deform no because all the particles of the sugar come back okay and form another shape all right but the particles do not move from each other but for a fluid if i have a water in a cup and i tilt the water i'm um, sorry the cup small when you pour on the table surface it moves up like the particles move away from each other you know so that is a clear example that i can give you okay so let's move on to the next topic we'll talk about okay so what is a flow okay the flow is the act of continuous deformation all right so the act of continuous or deformation so um, like i said you have the fluid and the fluid we've explained what fluid is the process where the fluid is being deformed continuously that act is what we call the flow okay all right so we have other types of flow um here what i actually mean is flow phenomena okay the process where some of the fluid you know flow or the types of flow some of fluids you know some of the fluids uses let me put it that way that would be better okay so how does let's say if i have a, an honey or if i have a ketchup how does a ketchup flow okay that is why we've categorized them into the types okay so we have the steady on unsteady flow and with this this steady flow is when you have a flow the uh, fluid that is flowing and all the fluid particles or oh sorry all the fluid properties we'll talk about fluid properties very soon and it remain constant at any point in time okay but if we're unsteady the fluid properties changes okay now when it comes to laminar flow it deals with the pathing that the um, fluid properties will take okay so when the pathing is parallel to the fluid properties are all or particles in the fluid are all parallel to each other their pathing is smooth like that they don't cross each other then we are talking about laminar flow and when it comes to turbulence flow for the turbulence the particles of the fluid or the fluid properties as i said earlier the particles their parts cross each other okay so if i have let's say for turbulence if i have let's say one particle is moving this way the another particle may be moving this way they will cross all right so that is for turbulence flow sorry turbulent flow and when it comes to uniform and non-uniform this deals with the velocity of um, a fluid okay so when a velocity of a fluid does not change at any point in time we're talking about a uniform but if it changes the velocity of the fluid changes at a particular point in time we're talking about the non-uniform flow okay that means the flow behavior of that particular fluid is non-uniform i hope you get it now when it comes to rotational flow is when the fluid you know 
particles rotate on their own axis okay so that is what we talk about rotational flow but for the rotational flow automatically you should know that they do not rotate on their own axis when it comes to compressible and incompressible flow okay is a type of flow in which the fluid involves okay the density changes at a particular time in point in time that is for compressible okay this one but for the incompressible this one the density does not change okay i hope we get it now now let me use the red pen to explain the remaining because they are really really important this one the viscous and the new non newtonian and what the rest okay for the viscous flow it deals with a fluid where the uh, sorry the viscosity is not zero a fluid that has a viscosity an example to viscous flow fluid or let me see viscous fluid will be any or ketchup now we'll talk about viscosity for you to understand it well but let me take this opportunity to explain the viscosity to you it's like the resistance that a fluid shows okay when when you are trying to pour it or when the fluid is flowing how fast does it move okay as it is moving the hindrances in it the slowness the causative of the slowness is what we call the viscosity okay now for inviscid fluid or inviscid flow it means the fluid that is involved has a zero viscosity okay and it's very rare for us to know because almost every fluid has um, a viscosity all right so when it comes to the newtonian flow and non-newtonian flow for newtonian flow the viscosity remains constant so constant viscosity okay let me write it well for you constant viscosity okay but for non-newtonian flow the viscosity changes at a particular point in time all right so these are the types of flow phenomena that we have you can search on them and read on them okay all right so let's move on to our next subtopic so we have fluid properties like i said i was mentioning them but we have a few that we will discuss here these few we will use them in um our next video our next video discussion we use that's why i wrote these so we have viscosity as one of the fluid velo uh, sorry properties we have velocity density pressure and temperature okay we have a lot you have a um, specific mass specific volume and the rest but like i said we'll use these in our next video so kindly just go and read on this but still we'll talk about particularly viscosity this one and um maybe velocity it just it will, it will appear in viscosity but not itself okay we'll just talk about it when we are discussing velocity sorry viscosity all right so let's move on to the next subtopic all right so i have what we call viscosity like i said what is visc viscosity now viscosity is it is that property of so it's a property okay we've, we've seen it that property of a fluid by virtue of which a fluid offers resistance this is where we should take care of this part resistance to shear stress okay it offers resistance to what shear stress that is what that that is what the property of that fluid or of a fluid does this particular property is what we call the viscosity and we are saying that this viscosity property is what the fluid property by virtue of which a fluid of first resistance to shear stress okay so the small pressure you cause to a fluid and when a fluid is moving okay the tangential forces we'll talk about them when you're dealing with um, para viscous flow and a whole lot but the forces or the the um, pressure that is attached to the surface of the body or plate that the fluid is moving the um resistance of the fluid to that surface okay as it is moving some fluid move faster than the other uh, faster than others meaning the some of them their resistance to movement or flow is very higher than others okay now let's use this opportunity also to talk about a specific law in fluid dynamics okay 
this law is very very important that we discuss newton's law of viscosity now it says that for a given rate of angular deformation of a fluid we are all reading this part okay we are reading this part now you see that for a given rate of angular deformation of a fluid shear stress is directly proportional to viscosity and now this is the formula for it shear stress this is it tau and you're saying it's directly proportional to viscosity and this is what we call the viscosity okay the mu is the viscosity in this case okay this one and now the tau like i said is what the shear stress shear stress let me say ss and the mu i've said it is what the viscosity and the u here we have some du dy the u here is the velocity like i said we talk about velocity in viscosity and the y is the area where the fluid is moving okay in this case we are considering the fluid to move in just one dimension okay and then the du dy that differential here is what we call shear strain rate okay all right so let's move on to our next sub topic and i think we'll be done for this section of our lesson okay all right so we have what we call the power law okay so what does the power law says it is just a formula that we have here okay now we say that tau which is the shear stress is equal to some constant k okay times du dy all to the power of n okay now these are the important notices you should know about this power law now the n determines the flow behavior index and the k determines the consistency index okay now if when the n is equal to one look at how the equation tends to it becomes tau is equal to k du dy because n is what one now if you remember in our previous discussion we just said something just in our previous page let me go there we said that tau is equal to mu du dy and this is what from the newton's law of viscosity if this happens then we have a newtonian flow okay when this happens, you have a newtonian flow but if you compare this and the other equation that i showed you right now you could see that tau is tau in the other equation and the other one you were having some mu here instead of k so in a newtonian flow n should be equal to one in the power law in this and k would automatically change to what you call the viscosity okay so for the power law there is a formula tau is equal to k du dy or the du dy to the power of n and when n is equal to one we have tau is equal to k du dy and this case will have a newtonian flow where our k will be equal to the viscosity thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel in our next video we start with the mathematical aspect of fluid flow we start with the power viscous flow thank you and see you next time